hello guys and welcome back to the channel once again today we are going to look at an interesting poem called an african tender storm by a poet with the name david ruba Dewey. let's go on to the analysis of this poem An African Tender Storm is a poem written by David Rubadiri. He was born in Malawi in 1930. The poet uses a tender storm to explain the history of how the West moved to Africa and colonized it. In this video, we shall look at the poem, the explanation of the poem, the form and structure, theme, literary devices, tone and mood, some questions and answers on the poem. Let's move on to stanza 1. From the west, clouds come hurrying with the wind, turning sharply here and there like a plague of locusts, whirling, tossing up things on its tail like a madman chasing nothing. Stanza 2. Pregnant clouds ride stately on its back, gathering to perch on hills like sinister dark wings. The wind whistles by, and trees bend to let it pass. Stanza 3. In the village, screams of delighted children pause and turn in the din of the whirling wind. Women, babies clinging on their backs, dart about, in and out, madly. The wind whistles by, while trees bend to let it pass. Stanza 4. Clothes wave like tattered flags, flying off, to expose dangling breasts, as jacked blinding flashes. Rumble, tremble, and crack amidst the smell of fight smoke and the pelting march of the storm. Now let's move on to some of the explanations of the poem. We shall be concentrating on a few important lines. The first line we have from the West. The first stanza lets the reader know that something is coming from the west. It almost sounds like a warning. The poet uses a plague of locusts to describe a large number of colonialists rushing into Africa from different places. They run after everything they saw, like a madman chasing nothing. He compares the action of the colonialists to how a mad person behaves. Let's look at the forming of clouds. The colonialists were preparing for something soon after their arrival. The line like sinister dark wings. It means that something unpleasant was about to pour down. Let's look at this line, and trees bend to let it pass. The poet uses trees to represent people who remained idle and gave way for the colonialists to continue their activities. They did not want to suffer in the hands of their colonial masters. Screams of delighted children. In spite of the coming danger, why are the children happy? The children reflect those who joined and helped the colonialists to carry out their activities. There is an account proverb which states that before an animal will bite you, it must be from your own clothes. Women with babies clinging on their backs Women are used to represent individuals who suffered the anger of the colonialists. They are also used 
to stand for those who stood against the Western forces and how they were maltreated, punished, and left to suffer. Now, in further explanation of the poem, the dignity and freedom of the African was taken away. The last stanza reveals the final pouring down of the elements hidden in the cloud. The storm was intense. There was rumbling, trembling, and cracking. It describes the actions taken by the colonialists as scary and awful. Clothes waving like tattered flags and exposing of dangling breasts reveals that the African was vulnerable and unprotected. The nature and way of life of the African was brought into disrepute. Things that made the African society unique was despised and replaced with foreign ideas. Let's look at the line and the pelting march of the storm. The colonialists took continuous action. Since there was nothing stopping them, they were free to do whatever pleased them. Religiously, politically, and morally, the African society was changed forever. Alright, let's look at some of the themes of the poem. So the first theme is the arrival of Europeans into Africa and the colonization of Africans. Another theme, the extraction of the cultural and personal identity of the African and introduction of European ones. African cultural elements like African traditional religion, polygamy, and the extended family systems were replaced with Christianity, monogamy, and nuclear family systems. All right, let's look on, let's move on to the third theme. It says that the constant attacks on those who stand to speak against injustice. It is revealed in the poem that those who spoke against injustice were humbled and despised. Let us now look at the structure of the poem. The poem has four stanzas and 32 lines. Each of the stanzas tells a different idea. The first stanza tells the arrival of the colonialists. The second tells about their preparation and plans. The third talks about what happened in the course of their action. And the fourth tells the consequences of their actions. Most of the lines are not punctuated. This is because most of the lines run into each other. A reader can therefore read without interruptions. Let us now look at some literary devices in the poem. Alliteration. Some examples of alliteration are the wind whistles, check the W's, toss and ten, Check the T's. Let us move on to simile. Examples in the poem are turning sharply here and there like a plague of locusts, tossing up things on its tail like a madman chasing nothing, gathering to perch on hills like sinister dark winds, clothes wave like tattered flags. Let's look at personification. We have pregnant clouds. Onomatopoeia. 
we have Wellen, Rambo, Tremble, and Crack. Repetition. The wind whistles by. Trees bend to let it pass. These are some of the literal devices that are found in the poem. Let us continue with our literal devices. We have imagery. A plague of locusts. What imagery does this create? It creates a mental picture of the large number of Europeans rushing into Africa. The second imagery, sinister dark winds. It creates an image of an evil or dark force. The third one, to expose dangling breasts. This creates an imagery of shame and disregard. And then we have tattered flags. It shows a sad and gloomy image. Let us now move on to symbolism. We have trees. It symbolizes those who refuse to confront the Europeans so as to avoid trouble. Women. It symbolizes individuals who suffered for challenging the colonialists. Then we have children. They represent the people who helped the foreigners to exploit Africa. The tone and mood of the poem. The poet uses different moods and tone in different lines and stanzas in the poem. You can find some of them in They are Distraction Havoc Chaos Helplessness Scary Pathetic and Sad Let us now look at some questions and answers on the poem. Question number one. What is the theme of an African thunderstorm? Colonialism and its effect on the African society. Who wrote the poem? David Rubadiri. Identify two literary devices in the poem. Simile and personification. What is the dominant literary device in Rambo, Tremble and Crack? Onomatopoeia. Let's look at question 5. How many lines and stanzas are found in the poem? Four stanzas and 32 lines. Describe the tone of the persona in the poem. Someone being in a hurry to escape danger. Question 7. What is the literary importance of diction in the poem? The diction helps the poet to give a vivid description of the tender storm and its effects. Question 8. What picture does tattered flags paint in the mind of the reader? Answer. We have sadness and helplessness. Let's continue with our questions and answers. Describe the role of children in the poem. Their role is to make the reader aware that some particular Africans were happy about the arrival of the colonialists because they benefited greatly. 
Question 10. What is the setting of the poem? In Africa, during the period of colonialism. To which of your senses does the imagery appeal to most? Sense of sight. Examine the use of repetition in the poem. The two lines of repetition are The wind whistles by and trees bend to let it pass. The use of this emphasis shows that the poet is not happy about the silence of those who refused to speak for the innocent. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this channel. If you found this video useful, do well to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also share your comments and thoughts in the comment section below. Until we meet again, goodbye and have a nice day.